the awakening of intelligence 24-7, i.e. living as intelligence 24-7, right now, right now, right now. Often I hear people say, oh, I don't like that, even though what they don't like would do them good. Consider food. Oh, I don't like that. Whatever they're saying they don't like is far better for them, often, than what they eat. So that's an example of not really being intelligent because they know, so there's a, there is a bit of intelligence there, that what they don't like is better for them than what they do like. They know that. But they refuse to eat what would be better for them. Take smoking. Oh, I know smoking is bad for me. But they're not really, they, that's knowledge. See, that's a bit of knowledge that they know. So they're not really using their intelligence. Going back to food. They know it's not good for them what they eat. And what do we mean by not good for one. Well, we're actually talking about the body-mind or the body itself. The body is, as we all know, a mechanical um, entity, a, a mechanical vehicle, if you like. No different to a car. The car's a mechanical, whatever, a mechanical um, device or a mechanical vehicle in this case. It's, it's just mechanics. All the various parts of the engine. It's like the various parts of the human being. So we know we're just a body-mind. But we're talking about the body right now. What would be what's good for the car? We know what's good for the car, and because we know what's good for the car, we do our best to adhere to what's good for the car. But why don't we use that same knowledge for our body? It's because of the lack of intelligence. Or intelligence, if you like, is a disposition. Knowledge isn't, isn't in itself a disposition. Knowledge is part of a disposition. The knowledge is not necessarily intelligence. Knowledge is simply just knowledge. I know, I know. And that comes from, most of the time, for most people, from a disposition of unintelligence. For intelligence to be activated, if you like, for intelligence to be lived, all time. The disposition of the body must, must change. And I use this as an analogy. The clenched fist and the open hand. The majority of the billions of people that live and have lived, live from this disposition. They are merely believers. They're merely 
sheep following sheep. They are merely part of groups, part of organisations, part of belief systems. They're not standing on their own two feet. They're not using the intelligence that comes from living like an open hand. Intelligence must become, must be drawn out of us, if you like. Intelligence is, has nothing whatsoever to do with this disposition. This disposition of the clenched fist is, if you like, strangulating intelligence. For intelligence is a higher, if you like, power. Gotten from living like this. It's gotten from a place that cannot be manufactured. Intelligence is not of the body. It's not part of the machinery. You see, we use our in intelligence when we're wanting to repair the car or we're using knowledge we are separate from the car from the kettle from the radio from the mechanics of all these objects and things and if it's not working we use that knowledge. But we're not doing that with the body, our own personal body, because we are getting involved in the body. We get involved with what we think. We get involved in our feelings and our likes and our dislikes. We are dictated we are victims of our likes and our dislikes. But it's this disposition that we are victims of. We live, the majority of people on the earth today and in the past, live like headless chickens, running around blindly following one another. We're not using our intelligence. Even if we know, you see, we, it doesn't matter how much we know that that's not good for us. If intelligence isn't operative, if intelligence isn't allowed to be to be. If intelligence isn't being activated, then no matter how much we know, we're not going to use that knowledge for the betterment of mankind. As someone who has been enlightened, as someone who is awake, I have this body has become a vehicle for intelligence, a vehicle for that which is greater than knowledge. Intelligence is real God. 
intelligence is that which was never born and will never die. It's prior to knowledge. Intelligence is not me or you. Intelligence isn't our personalities. Intelligence is a freedom. You do not need to be how you are. Intelligence can move you from one to another, from, from eating bad food to eating good food. Intelligence can move you from that desire to have another cigarette to not having a cigarette. Intelligence is stillness. Intelligence is peace. Intelligence is what is common amongst us all. Intelligence is, if you like, part of the second birth that Jesus talked about, being born again. Intelligence is the death of the ego, which this clenched fist represents. Intelligence comes from that place of responding to life and not reacting. Intelligence comes from a stillness that isn't tainted with history. Intelligence is clean. Intelligence hasn't got any familiarity. Intelligence is, if you like, air and water where it can just go here, there and everywhere without changing. We talk about common sense. That's not necessarily intelligence. It's the what's accepted. Common sense can be manipulative. People say you're not using the sense that you were born with. Common sense is used please the masses. Common sense is part of the machinery, if you like, of the body. To be intelligent, to be activated, to be living as intelligence, means that every moment of the day, is a conscious activity. It's not coming from habit. It's not a tendency. Intelligence is now. In intelligence is God living you. Intelligence is not manipulative. Intelligence, as I said earlier, is beyond 
identifying with the body or likes and dislikes, which aren't really the body. Your likes and dislikes come from feelings. When I talk about the body, the body is basically a machine. Thoughts and feelings come and go. The skeleton doesn't come and go. The organs don't come and go. The digestive system doesn't come and go. Yes, it gets older and may need being repaired. But feelings and thoughts, they do come and go. Often you see something and you're stimulated by what you see. And you become a victim of that stimulus. Intelligence is being in charge. It's not. Are you being intelligent right now? Or are you reactive, reacting to what you hear? When one lives like the open hand, as intelligence, then no matter what is arising, you don't react to it, but you can respond to it. Or not, as the case may be, you can simply allow whatever's arising to arise without a response to change what's arising. The intelligence of the heart the awakening of intelligence so how does one live as intelligence or how do we go from here to here well, how does a dormant kettle become activated? How does a cold iron become hot? Simple. You connect it to the electric source, the source of electricity. That power transforms the object, the bit of machinery. The same with this body or intelligence. It has to be connected to the source. Have you heard of the phrase, missing the mark? Have you heard of the phrase, death of the ego? Have you heard of the phrase Holy Communion, Divine Communion? Do you know the word, the Sanskrit word, satsang? Communion means connected. The yoga. There is a source, just as there's an electric source that we plug the kettle into. We need to be plugged in to the divine source. That's what's meant by the phrase Jesus said, I am the way, the truth 
and the light. Intelligence is light. Intelligence is freedom from darkness. Intelligence is life. For me, I had to find a teacher, or the teacher found me, that I could connect to and resonate with. You have to fall in love. You need to fall out of love for this nonsense and fall into love into this freedom, into this life, into this intelligence of the open hand. We have to become attracted, attracted to that which is greater than this. This has to be more and more our focus, our intention, our going towards, away from this to this. And we need an agent. We need the source. We need that which has lived as full-time intelligence and continues to do so. We have to tap into it. Just like the embryo is connected to the source, the mother in this case, or the umbilical cord, the baby inside the mother is connected. Once we're disconnected, we become like this. And we're continually living in order to be released of this. We think the bad food and the bad company, etc. relieves us of this. It certainly is not a good way to live. However, in saying that, intelligence is, as I said earlier, untainted. Intelligence hasn't got any history. Intelligence is freedom. Living like this is very mechanical, very reactive. Very isolating. At times very aggressive. Very selfish. To live like this is being a servant of life. It's living in the moment, not setting conflict. It's true happiness, joy, intimacy. It really is. It's a graceful happening. You have to free up your attention from off this. We don't want to live like this anymore. This 
disposition means you are mature. You stand on your own two feet, not dependent on anyone or anything to make you happy and to fulfill you. When you connect up to the source, whatever you choose your source to be, as I said, I chose Adidas Sambar to be my source. Here's a picture of him and two other gurus, Muktananda Ramana Maharshi. There's Adidas Samraj, who communing, people don't want to do this in the house, communing with the person of love, communing with the person that has lived and continues to live, has that open hand disposition. There's an old saying, you become what you meditate on. So by turning away from this to this, from the egoic self to that place of love and happiness, that's what you become. We are all Christ. We are all God. Yes, God is intelligent. And that's what we truly are. It's a happiness beyond thought, feelings. Do not be a victim of the in unintelligent disposition. Open up, blossom and live. Thank you for listening.